let's solve the fourth problem based on convolution i have taken the fourth problem from gate 2017 electronics and communication paper in this problem there are two lti systems and they are connected in parallel h1 is the impulse response of the first lti system h2 is the impulse response of the second lti system and as they are connected in parallel they will have the same input the input is xt and you can see output y it is there which we have obtained after adding the output of the first lti system and the output of the second lti system in the problem impulse responses of the systems are already given h1t is equal to twice of delta t plus 2 minus thrice of delta t plus 1 and h2t is equal to delta t minus 2 in the problem it is given if the input xt is a unit step signal then the total energy energy means the total energy of yt is so this is the complete problem we are required to calculate the total energy of yt we have the two impulse responses given in the problem we have input xt as a unit step signal so let's proceed to our solution there are few important concepts this question requires the first concept is related to the convolution you can see two systems are connected in parallel and if you remember the properties of convolution there was one property known as the distributive property and from there we obtained one important result we can have the equivalent system whose impulse response we can write as sum of all the impulse responses for example in this case there are two systems connected in parallel so we can have one equivalent system i will draw my equivalent system and let's say the impulse response of this equivalent system is h subscript e t we know lti systems are defined using the impulse response so if we have the impulse response we can define this particular equivalent lti system so we are focusing on calculation of the impulse response which is the equivalent impulse response and from the distributive property of convolution the equivalent impulse response will be equal to h1t plus h2t so here h subscript et is equal to h1t plus h2t and we already have h1t and h2t in the problem the input will remain same the input is xt and the output is yt so we have input we have the impulse response we can calculate the output yt we already know the mathematical tool we used to calculate the output when the impulse response and input is given output yt is equal to xt convolution h equivalent t or we can write xt convolution inside the bracket h1t plus h2t i will use the distributive law here and from distributive law i can write xt convolution h1t plus xt convolution h2t and we already know h1t is equal to twice of delta t plus 2 minus thrice of delta t plus 1 so we will substitute this value here h2t is equal to delta t minus 2 so we will substitute that value here and after substituting we will have xt convolution inside the bracket twice of delta t plus 2 minus thrice of delta t plus 1 this is what we have plus xt convolution with delta t minus 2 delta t minus 2 now here to simplify this we will use one more property of convolution which we have used a lot in the previous few lectures also we have used this property xt convolution with delta t minus t1 is equal to xt minus t1 in place of t we will write t minus t1 but in first term to apply this property we need the distributive property again so we will have xt convolution with twice of delta t plus 2 then we will have minus xt convolution with thrice of delta t 
plus 1 the last term will remain as it is xt convolution with delta t minus 2 now we will use this property in all the three terms we are having here in place of t I will write t plus 2 and this 2 will come along with x so we will have twice of x t plus 2 then we will have x t plus 1 and this 3 will come here then we will have plus x t minus 2 in place of this t we will write t minus 2 so this is what we have as the value of output y t and as it is given in the problem that x t is a unit step signal we can write it in a different form x t is a unit step signal so y t will become twice of u t plus 2 x t plus 2 we can write as u t plus 2 because x t is equal to u t in the same way we will have thrice of u t plus 1 plus u t minus 2 so this is what we have till this point we have used two important properties of convolution and I think most of you can easily solve up to this point now after this we are required to calculate the total energy of y t for this we need the waveform of y t so let's see the process to obtain the waveform of output y t we have the mathematical representation and using this we will obtain the waveform of output y t the y axis represents y t and the x axis is for the variable t we know the process to obtain the mathematical representation when the given waveform is combination of step and ramp signals so if we have a waveform which is combination of step and ramp we can easily obtain the mathematical representation but here in this case we have the reverse scenario here we have the mathematical representation and we want the waveform and if you see the mathematical representation you will find output y t is the combination of step signals therefore we can easily obtain the waveform and to obtain the waveform I will write down this relation in the form which we obtain after calculating the mathematical representation from the waveform directly I will add 0 on the right hand side of the relation and it will not change our relation so y t is equal to 0 plus 2 u t plus 2 then minus 3 u t plus 1 then we have plus u t minus 2 now we will obtain the waveform y it is equal to 0 initially this means the flow of the signal is like this now when t is equal to minus 2 the amplitude of y t will change to 2 because we have 2 u t plus 2 and plus 2 represents there is time shifting and the shifting is towards the left and when t is equal to minus 2 we will have the transition in the amplitude initially the amplitude was equal to 0 and when t is equal to minus 2 the amplitude of the signal will change and it will become plus 2 and it will continue to be plus 2 until t is equal to minus 1 because when t is equal to minus 1 there is again transition in the amplitude and you can see the negative sign here here it was positive sign that's why there was upward shift and when there is negative sign there is downward shift so let's say t is equal to minus 1 here and the amplitude of y t will remain 2 from minus 2 to minus 1 now look carefully the second term in the relationship it is minus 3 u t plus 1 u t plus 1 is telling us that there is amplitude transition when t is equal to minus 1 and from minus 3 we have this information that there is downward level shifting and the amount of shifting is equal to 3 now here you can commit one mistake after you see minus 3 you will make a transition up to minus 3 here which is a wrong move because minus 3 indicates two things the first thing is that there is downward level shifting when negative is there there is downward shifting when positive is there there is upward shifting 
So there is downward shifting and the amount of shifting is equal to 3. This means the discontinuity is equal to 3. You are having 2 as the magnitude of yt and to have the discontinuity equal to 3 in downward direction you need to go up to yt equal to minus 1. This is how the waveform will look. Now you need to focus on the third term. The third term is ut minus 2. This means when t is equal to 2 there will be amplitude transition. So our waveform will continue its magnitude equal to minus 1 up to t equal to 2 like this. Let's say this is t equal to 2 and this one here is y t equal to minus 1 and here we have t equal to minus 1. So this is what we have till now and you can see here we have positive sign along with 1 as the magnitude. So there will be upward level shifting because of positive sign and the amount by which the shifting will take place is equal to 1. So our waveform will have the upward level shifting and the amount of discontinuity is equal to 1. Minus 1 to 0 will give you the discontinuity equal to 1. And when t is greater than 2, y t is equal to 0. And when t is less than minus 2, y t is equal to 0. So this is how we have obtained the waveform of y t. And now it is very easy to calculate the total energy. We know the formula for the total energy. It is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity mod x t square d t. Here x t is y t. So in place of x t, I will write y t. And first we need to take the modulus of the given waveform. So the positive portion will remain positive and the negative portion will become positive like this. So mod y t is equal to 2 from minus 2 to minus 1 and it is equal to 1 from minus 1 to 2. And now we will calculate the total energy. So let's start our calculation. From minus infinity to minus 2, y t is equal to 0. So mod y t square will also become 0. So from minus infinity to minus 2, mod y t square is equal to 0. So we have integration of 0. Plus from minus 2 to minus 1, mod y t square will become 4. From minus 2 to minus 1, we have mod y t square equal to 4. Plus from minus 1 to 2, mod y t square will be 1. From minus 1 to 2, mod y t square is equal to 1. Plus from 2 to infinity, mod y t square is equal to 0 because mod y t is equal to 0. So we have integration of 0. Now you can easily solve it and you will have the total energy. From the first integration you will get 0. From the second integration you will get 4 inside the bracket t. The lower limit is minus 2, the upper limit is minus 1. From the third integration you will get t. The lower limit is minus 1, the upper limit is 2. And from the fourth integration you will get 0. Let's solve it. You will have 4 minus 1 plus 2 from here plus 2 plus 1. So from the first term you will get 4 multiplied to 1 which is equal to 4 and from here you will get 3. So 7 is the answer. The total energy of yt is equal to 7. So this problem looks lengthy but it is not that much lengthy if you have the good practice of the topics. To explain you I took this much time but if you know the topics you can easily solve it in a very small amount of time. The only important thing is use of properties. So this is all. If you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section.